Hello guys and welcome to your 17th Java tutorial in which we are going to be going over multi-dimensional arrays. Now as you recall from the last tutorial, what arrays are are pretty much just groups of variables or um, certain objects. But what multi-dimensional arrays are, they're groups of arrays. Now before we actually go even further into that topic, let's actually just get to the code part uh, first and just create a multi-dimensional array. So as you uh, can imagine, uh, the format for a multi-dimensional array is pretty much the same um, as it is for a regular array. So first we put the data type uh, we want our array to be in. In this case I want it to be in string. Uh, then we put the name of our multi-dimensional array, organisms. Well, that's pretty much a uh, topic I thought of. Uh, anyways, after this, instead of just putting single brackets and then an equal sign, which pretty much means it's an array, we are going to put double brackets. Bam! That's a twist right there. Uh, and then an equal sign, and we are going to set it into not only one set of curly braces, not only one, but there's actually sets of curly braces inside this already, uh, and inside this larger encompassing set of curly braces. So, what the heck is going on here? I find it easier to think if each of these two curly braces right now is an array. These these curly braces represent arrays, okay? Uh, then these curly braces represent also, they also represent arrays inside this larger encompassing array. And as you can imagine, inside these uh, curly braces, we can put pretty much uh, any regular strings. So, uh, I've already made three sets of arrays inside this larger array. Uh, and I, I'm thinking one is going to be uh, animals, the other one's going to be plants, and the other one's going to be bacteria, because the title of our array is, after all, organisms. Uh, so, anyways, let's let's just put in uh, a few a few elements into each. I don't know, humans, uh, um, dogs, platypi. <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm not sure how that's spelled. I think I think that's right though. Uh, in our plants array, let's just put in some random stuff too. Some flowers. I don't know what else. Uh, some grass. Uh, you know, some trees. Got to have those. Ah, uh, there we go. And for bacteria, let's put some euglena in there. Uh, let's throw some paramecium in there. And let's throw on some E. coli. Thinking hard. Thinking back hard to uh, life sciences there. Uh, so anyways, there we go. We've gotten a nice little review on life sciences. And we've also gotten uh, kind of our multi-dimensional array filled out right now. Uh, so what what this pretty much means these two what's what's the significance of these two uh, brackets this two pairs of brackets right here well this first pair of brackets pretty much represents the number that you put in this one represents the array that you're accessing so if say we put a number zero here it's going to look at all the different arrays in our uh, larger encompassing array that's one array there's two there's three so if we put a zero in here it's going to go and it's going to look at the very first array this very first array, it's going to highlight that. If we put a zero in here, and the and the in the second one, we uh, specify our specific element. So it can be either humans, dogs, or platypi. Uh, so if we put in another zero in here, it's going to go to the very first element of the very first array, which is humans. Uh, however, if we put say a two in here, it's going to go to the third element, third array in our larger encompassing array. It's going to go zero. It's going to go one. Ugh. One, oh gosh, my gosh. All right, there we go. It's going to go one, and then it's going to move on to two, or our last, our last array. And then the next number that we put in here, say if it's for example another two, uh, it's going to go in in this specific array. Ah, oh. all right, there we go. In this specific array, it's going to go zero, one, two. It's going to navigate to the second or third, technically our third element in this smaller array, and it's going to print out E. coli. That's kind of like basic navigation, guys, in our arrays, uh, and just uh, in our multi-dimensional arrays. Excuse that thought. And I'm just going to demonstrate a few things by printing out our or different types of organisms. There we go. 
So once again, we can we can pretty much just demonstrate and code what I just said by say putting an organisms. Let's put a one to access the second array zero one of our larger encompassing array organisms, uh, and then after that, let's just put another square brackets and let's put uh, a one another one. No, actually a zero. Some part of flowers. Yeah. All right. Some flowers to actually access the first element of that array. Uh, so if we run this, it should say flowers and bam, flowers. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? All right. Uh, this will work with anything else. We can access our animals array. We can print some, no, some platypi. How you like them apples? Let's print some platypi out on the screen. Uh, bam, platypi out on the screen. That's great. So it's a more or less kind of a, um, a simple concept once you get used to it of these multidimensional arrays. It might seem slightly confusing at first. Uh, it's just kind of mandatory to know what they are and to know how to actually use them in programming, guys. Let me see how much time I have left, if I have time to fit something extra into this. Uh, yeah, guys, we have a decent amount of time left. I just wanted to tell you that instead of actually creating just two-dimensional arrays, this is what they're called in this case because there's two dimensions here, we can actually create any number of dimensions in our array. It legitimately doesn't matter. Uh, but usually more than three is very awkward and tedious to use. So I, 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 in your programming experience, I wouldn't uh, say that you guys would have to uh, meet with more than three of these. And what this, these three things mean, this three-dimensional array technically, this practically means that this entire thing right here, this entire array, this entire array has to be put into, uh, I'm sorry, this, this entire array, there we go, the entire thing. Uh, has to be put into um, curly braces. The entire thing, Ugh. sorry, the entire thing, and practically what this means is it means that this entire thing is an element and a vast, huge three-dimensional array. So after this, we can put another comma, for example, and we can start another array which has three more arrays inside it, which is kind of crazy. And it uh, becomes very hard to organize and actually, I don't know, actually program in, in such a such a just large amount of uh, data kept in one array. Uh, so once again, you see we can create this other array that has three more arrays inside of it. And if we access it, we can just access it by putting currently, instead of putting a zero, we can put a one to access the second element of our huge organisms array. Uh, which pretty much this entire thing is just some organisms and this another array of just pretty much just random stuff and it we're accessing that right now uh, and we access the first element in that array to get access to these these elements instead of these ones so in the second uh, in the second square brackets we can put zero access the first array and say uh, another one to access the second element of that array so we're going out of our huge you know massive arrays we're going to 0 1 1 the first one and in this this encompassing array we out of these three arrays there's one there's two here's three we want to take the first one which is 0 so simply grab that first one sorry there we go grab that first one and out of this uh, array we want to pick out the uh, one or the second element which is def ah oh, gosh Def sedefasvadefa. There we go. So that should print out if we run this program now, and b shabam, def sedefasvadefa. It printed out well on the screen. Uh, yeah, I know three-dimensional arrays can get very confusing. Four-dimensional. I've never seen four-dimensional arrays used ever. Uh, so. Uh, I think that's as much as we need to cover for multidimensional arrays. We'll be going over some interesting stuff with arrays in the next tutorial, but I'm pretty sure uh, next tutorial will be the conclusion of this mini array series. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please like the video if you found the stuff useful, and I will see you next time. Peace.